It's a really exciting time for trade today. Um, you know, there's so much going on in terms of modernizing the global trading system. The big news is the change of English law, the Electronic Trade Documents Act, which came into force on the 20th of September. That means that 80% of bills of lading, 60% of global trade finance, marine, shipping, commodities, uh, and all companies using English law to transact internationally can all go digital. That means removing the paper, getting rid of the bureaucracy, uh, and modernizing those global supply chains. Perhaps more importantly, it's the last piece of the jigsaw in, in the large uh, legal environment. We've already got Singapore law aligned to the UNSATRAL model law and electronic transferable records. The US law is also aligned through Delaware law, New York law, and the Uniform Commercial Code. That means that 80 to 90% of international trade transactions can be fully digital. Uh, those three laws provide the global scale that we need to really now transform the system. So what is actually really happening? There are three layers of trade transactions. You've got this finance layer, this paperwork layer, and this physical shipment layer. And of course, in the, in the past, those three have operated on different processes and systems, very bureaucratic. There's no interoperability between data. Well, that all changes when we move from paper to data because that means that the three layers can collapse into real-time transactions. That's transactions happening in hours, not weeks and months, uh, all because we can get rid of that sort of paper bureaucracy that sandwiches between finance and physical shipments. So I'll give you two examples that are, illustrate this extremely well. Abacor, a UK SME that trades sugar uh, or buys sugar in Nicaragua uh, and imports that sugar into the UK. That, that process typically takes weeks, uh, if not months, to transact. Uh, they actually transacted on an electronic bill of exchange in two hours. That meant that the company itself could get cheaper finance. Uh, it could immediately turn around and do a second trade uh, in, in a fraction of the time that it would normally be able to do that. So that's a good example of a simple electronic bill of exchange. The second example is a company called Mellon & Co. Uh, who ship melons from Brazil to the UK. They have 65,000 hectares of melon growing in northern Brazil. Uh, as you can imagine, that's perishable goods. It really matters uh, in terms of time taken over the border, transacting, uh, obviously on the ship across the sea, and you want to get those melons on the supermarket shelves as quickly as possible. Well, by simply using electronic bills of lading, uh, that company was able to strip out so much inefficiency, they actually became 15% more profitable by simply using one electronic uh, uh, document, electronic transferable record, as it's called. Those are two SMEs trading, good examples. There are lots more. We're seeing chemical trades from Mexico to Chile on Singapore law. We're seeing iron ore trades from Australia to China on English law. Uh, it is absolutely a different environment today than it was even a few weeks ago. Uh, and it's really now down to companies to really optimize uh, and make this happen at a, at a real scale. So what happens next? What are we focused on? Well, we've got some more uh, infrastructure to, to get into place. We have to set up a reliable systems framework, both to meet the legal provisions uh, of the Electronic Trade Documents Act, but also to signal to companies now uh, what kind of standards they need to adopt so they can be future-proof. But it also means now seeing uh, or setting up, if you like, uh, the emergence of public utility architecture uh, in the wake of trade lens and the platforms that we've seen uh, uh, not succeed, primarily because of legal barriers and design flaws. Uh, there's a real opportunity now to establish a public utility architecture. That means open source interoperability framework so that companies can use open source code and move data uh, across platforms and systems. It also means the reliable systems framework that we're now building uh, in the next 12 months. And it means using the public law frameworks that we're now seeing coming into place, particularly across the G7 in China, uh, but also across the Commonwealth. Uh, and we'll see an awful lot more of that over the coming years. So it's a really exciting time for trading. Uh, there's so much more that we can do. We really shouldn't be trading in the way that we have done for the last 200 years. This is about now establishing a modern trading environment for the next 100 years. And now it's our opportunity to really drive um, a much more inclusive 
much more effective trading system.